Hello there, this is Thomas Lancaster from Birmingham City University and I want to tell you a bit about the project I'm working on alongside the Higher Education Academy. It's called Developing Podcasts to Assist Students with Production Professional Online Presence. This work has been funded by the HEA as part of their Changing the Learning Landscape series. It's a small grant but it's designed to just provide me with some time to look into the world of podcasting which is something that I haven't had much chance to explore. But most importantly, as well as enhancing my own practice and hopefully providing feedback to other people who are interested in podcasts, I want to provide some useful audio resources in the form of podcasts which students can use to enhance their own employability. And these will be beneficial both to my own students who I teach within this area and students at other institutions who would also like to explore this further. My background is I work as a senior lecturer at Birmingham City University. I work in the School of Computing, Telecommunications and Networks, or Computing for short. Within that school, which is quite a large school, I lead the Innovations in Computing Education group because I'm very involved with education, technology enhanced learning, look at the ways we can improve the student experience, and a lot of other stuff I work with are interested in those areas as well. I'm the program leader for the computer science course. I'm also a senior fellow for the Higher Education Academy. As well as the technical modules, I teach some of the main employability modules as well, so particularly a second year module called Research and Professional Practice 2, where we look at the skills students need to make themselves employable. And an area I focus in on is professional online presences. And I use this because computing students are particularly enthusiastic when they get to use a computer, which is where the word online comes in, and I also feel it's something very visual and engaging to keep them excited about employability, which although it's important to all of us as academics, can also be quite a dry area for students. And I've organized several HA workshops in this area, I've presented other workshops, I've delivered conference papers, I've written a book chapter in this area, so I've got quite a lot of experience both from my own research and those from some of my other colleagues who are working in the field. My view is that students need to think about how they present themselves online when they're looking for jobs because employers can search for them and indeed they do search for them. Some of my computing students are completely surprised about this to find out that they're applying for jobs with people who've heard of Facebook and yet they're working in the computing field, probably some of the early adopters. But even with, in other fields, the employers are interested in what students are doing and there are different types of professional presences that employers and students both use. They're the very professional ones, the ones that we would like employers to look at, such as a LinkedIn profile, which is a large professional social network, or a website that the student has set up with an e-portfolio, but they're also the ones that students think are there solely for fun and pleasure. Places like Facebook, which is where all the dirt that students wouldn't necessarily want a prospective employer to know about them, can be found. I try and help students to present a positive view of themselves. It can provide examples of the work, it can say the positive things about them, it can enhance their CV, it can make them findable online. And I encourage other academics to do this, and I know this area of employability is being used now increasingly around the country. But it's not an easy area to get into, particularly for people who aren't so computer literate, or their skills and their interests lie firmly in the academic side of studies. And so with this funded project, I'm hoping to provide podcasts which students can listen to and which can support all the other resources which are out there when they are thinking about their own professional online presence. The funding from the Higher Education Academy is to develop eight podcasts. And the reason it's eight is because I've already prepared for the HEA eight sets of slides on different aspects relating to professional online presences. They're available as open educational resources. I have the link in one of the next slides. So this is largely repurposing and I think from my own experience of doing videos, which is a related area to podcasts, then 
repurposing is really important because it's just not sensible to write things from scratch every time when there's some very good resources out there already. Now, of course, these resources may need to have some changes so they work in the form of audio and they work for students other than mine, but the initial resources have been prepared for academics in all fields. And these are the sessions that are available at the moment, everything from an overview, just helping students think about employability and where the internet falls in, going through some of the different sites students can use, some of the main ones, the role of video, which I think is important and engaging now, moving on to some of the advanced tactics which students can use to really demonstrate their own expertise online. And this is the style of resources. They're in the form of PowerPoint slides. Now, the disadvantage I do see about these, uh, and these aren't the same talks I use with my own students, is that I had to re rework them to remove any real identifiable examples of students. And so they need to be slotted in when other academics are using these materials, either in the way they present or perhaps by them looking and reviewing the slides and editing them in advance because they are open educational resources so it's perfectly fine to edit them. Personally, when I'm teaching, I like to do a lot of demos. I like to pull up information about different students. I like to show them my own professional online presence as well, because even though I present it as an academic, a slightly different way to we'd expect students to present themselves, most of the same principles still work there. The resources are available online at that very unwieldy URL you can see at the bottom of the slides on the Higher Education Academy site. They're also archived on the Birmingham City University site as well. But they're all there. Uh, this was part of a workshop, so there are lots of other interesting talks on that page as well. There are some challenges for me, and some benefits as well from producing these podcasts. And I want to start off by saying I've been interested in getting into podcasts for some time, but needed that bit of a push so I can really get involved with all the other time pressures that go on, which, as academics, we all have to weigh up. So the main benefit is that experience, but the challenge is that lack of experience. And I do have a lot of knowledge about social media and computing use in general, because that's my field and my background. But just looking at some of the technical difficulties, even down to the way these are then provided to other people, whether they're just direct audio links to be downloaded, or if I can perhaps get them listed on iTunes. There are cost implications of all of these, and I'm working really without a budget or like all academics with the kind of budget that I'm willing to put in to support this because a small amount of money from the HA gratefully received has just really been used to get local support to continue to work on this project. So I've got to put together both best practice, the amount of time I've got and although I'm documenting this process most of that time is external exploration, it's trying things out it's no doubt recording podcasts I have to throw away because they're not so good so it's looking at some of these best practices looking at the types of students can be supported and working out what will benefit the greatest numbers and what's achievable so that's one reason I've already looked at the repurposing idea because that work's been done but what we're doing here is we're taking a set of visual materials and trying to make them into an audio form. So I can see some immediate challenges with that as to talking about LinkedIn, say. It's very different to showing students LinkedIn on a screen and going through the different parts for it. So it may be that some areas are more overview than if these were done in the form of videos. Uh, there's also the fact that some of the materials may need some updates, but I hope to explore that as I go alongside. I hope that you follow along with what I'm doing. You may be looking at this after I've completed the project as well, in which case you can look back at some of the steps I've taken. No doubt at some point I'll be able to turn this into either some very formal blog posts, an academic paper, or some way of exploring this, or perhaps some conference presentations and workshop presentations, but for now I've got a blog set up at professionalonlinepresence.com forward slash changing the learning landscape. Hopefully 
By the Times this journal I'll also have some information on the main root site, professionalonlinepresent.com, but initially I'm just working on keeping an archive in the form of blog posts. Hopefully about 10 posts, both uh, written posts and uh, video posts if appropriate, or perhaps graphical posts by the time I get through. Cultivating, of course, with a link to the finished podcasts for them to be used. If you're interested in finding out more about me as well, you can look at my own professional online presence, which includes lots of information about me, the areas I'm interested in, how you can contact me if you're interested in me speaking at an event or workshop or working with your staff, uh, and also the blog posts and links to other sites that I'm involved with within the social media spectrum. And you can find that at thomaslancaster.co.uk. So at this point, thank you for following along with this introductory video in this Changing the Learning Landscape project, Looking Professional Online Presences, and I look forward to producing the podcasts and sharing the results with you.